sir. All right, so today's Thursday back. No, let's start over here. So today is Thursday. That makes it leg day. Now, out of all my different training days, the one that probably caused me the most discomfort as far as pain is leg day. So I've had a lot of people ask me about what is my routine when it comes to pain management. So for anyone who doesn't know my backstory, super real quick, got in this nasty car accident right here. Have a lot of stuff like this still in my body. Rods and femurs, broken hips, you name it. And with all that, doesn't come without a lot of serious pain. So I think if anything, more than being someone who is probably considered maybe a fitness expert, I'm probably more an expert in pain or pain management. So real quick, what are some of the things that I do? My routine before I get into my workout so I don't let it become an impediment. Well, first thing people ask me, do I use any kind of real pain medication? The answer is no, mainly because I've had too many friends that I've watched it ruin their entire life. So I've always stayed away from that. Uh, it's just not worth it for me. Plus, that's a short-term solution. What, are you going to be on pain medication for the rest of your life? It just never seemed like a very viable option to me. So here's what I do on a daily basis. First thing, this guy right here, it's a foam ball. I use this instead of a foam roller. So doing a lot of massage work or tissue work is an important step. Two, these are pretty cool. Comes with this remote. These are wireless muscle stim. So for example, low back, that really helps a lot. So I'll do that first thing in the morning. As far as like ice versus heat, ice is, you know, that's an immediate injury for 72 hours after that, you know, ice really isn't the solution. So for me, I'm trying to loosen up and warm up. So believe it or not, like with low back before I do a, a back day, first thing in the morning, a lot of times I'll use heat. Uh, as far as daily supplements, so every single day, here's what I take. These products right here. So it's a brand I trust. Uh, this one is their Joint Synergy product. So it does have some glucosamine chondroitin in there. It also has the curcumin in there as well. Two different approaches here. This is more for connective tissue health, helping rebuild. This is more a natural anti-inflammatory. So this product does have both, but I actually take them all together. Uh, as far as what I do on a day where I feel really fucked up, Here's the thing, you've got things like ibuprofen or naproxen, which is gonna be Aleve. You've got topical versions, which is Voltaren. So the, this ibuprofen, aspirin, this product, you'll see right here, NSAID, which is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Here's the thing. The danger in these is, yes, it can cause uh, issues with liver. It does raise your liver enzymes, but bigger risk is going to be stomach issues because these are affecting a enzyme that's also in our stomach that protects our stomach lining. So if you take these for too long, that's one of the big risks. So you hear people with ulcers, et cetera. That's where a Celebrex is going to come in. So this is what you call a selective COX-2 inhibitor, whereas these are both COX-1 and COX-2. COX-1 is the one that's in our stomach. So this one doesn't have the same effect on your stomach. But even then, I try to avoid these if possible. I reserve these for the days, like I said, where I feel really fucked up, but they are an option. Now, that's where you're... Curcumin turmeric comes in. So curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric. And that is basically a natural anti-inflammatory. So that's why I try to stick to this and I try to save these for a rainy day when I really need it. But that is my daily regimen. So with that said, I'm going to take this. We're going to loosen up and we've got legs today. So I'm going to head in there now. So we are still doing combination of dumbbells and resistance bands. 
We're going to switch it up a little bit from the PDF. I say this a lot, but you know, for me, a workout plan is just a guide it's to create some framework. It doesn't mean you have to be locked into it. I usually have a tendency to resist that. I don't like doing the same thing over and over. I like a little bit of variety, not because I think it's necessary for muscle stimulus or muscle growth, but I do it just to keep it interesting and keep it fun. So we're gonna maybe mix it up a little bit today compared to some of our other workouts. But before we do that, like I said, we're going to loosen up. So I'm gonna loosen up low back, kind of warm up the lower body a little bit and stretch that out before we hit this workout. So first thing, I actually, before I do any kind of warm up, I'll throw it down the mat. And the nice thing about this compared to a foam roller is, you know, foam roller is a big broad surface area, whereas this is more pinpointed. So you get into certain areas. So I can come in here just on the left side of my low back. I can also come into the glute. And that's where a lot of times for me, low back pain comes from is when glutes and hamstrings get too tight and they start to pull down on the pelvis. And then it becomes that tug of war between the muscles in your low back and your glutes and hamstrings. And these muscles are much bigger, much stronger. So usually they win the tug of war. So I always make sure that not only do I come in here and use this, but stretching out those hamstrings and glutes as well. But I like to do that once the muscles are a little warm. So I'll just do some body weight squats usually just to warm up the muscle, get some blood flowing. This thing's my favorite too, because once I get it right under my pelvis, I don't know what's going on in there, but everything seems to like kind of pop into place once it relaxes a little bit. And a lot of times I'll take some of the pressure off. I just have to put the extra time and energy into a warm up. Otherwise training legs for me sucks. It's pretty miserable. And when your workouts feel that way, then you have a tendency to avoid them. And next thing you know, it's like, You've gone months and months without having a really good leg workout. So at least for me, it's worth taking the extra time. So this is where do a little light body weight squat. So I like to really practice good technique here, good posture. So I like to think about chest out, chin up, finding a spot on the wall. A lot of times I'll even maybe put my arms out in front of me because they're a good tell. If I'm leaning forward when I squat down, my hands start pointing down at the ground. They should be here the whole time. So it's, it's kind of like a good indicator. So I think about putting my weight in my heels and dropping that butt down and keeping that posture. We do these nice and slow. Make them a little harder since we're not adding any resistance. Six. I'm going to do six more of these. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. So now we're going to do a light quad stretch. You know, one of the advantages of, I say an advantage, but you know, you got to make lemonade out of lemons. But one of the advantages of getting in that car accident when I was younger is in order to keep training, it forced me to find ways to train a little bit smarter. You know, I tried going back to my old ways and squatting super heavy and doing heavy deadlifts and it just was wrecking me. So had to learn how to make adjustments and figure out how to train and still get good results despite the injuries. And my legs aren't big anymore. Uh, frankly, I don't really 
care the big enough, you know, to get me from point A to point B. But I was able to come back and compete in bodybuilding shows and win bodybuilding shows. And I was able to do that by training with different techniques that allowed me to keep doing it without destroying my body in the process. So that would be the one advantage of that whole experience was, whereas a lot of guys wait until way later in life, when all of a sudden aches and pains of life catch up with you, they start trying to modify. Well, I started modifying my training in my 20s. And it's allowed me to keep doing this. You know, for me, I think this is, I'm going on year 34 of training. Started when I was 16 and I've never stopped. Longest break I ever took was when I was laying broken in a hospital bed. And even then, as soon as I could, I was still on a walker, cast on both arms and I went right back into the gym. So I think I've got just as good of excuse as anybody for not wanting to do legs, but where there's a will, there's a way. I'm gonna do one more stretch here while the mat's still here. Drop down. We wanna push our pelvis forward, keeping our torso upright. There's no stretch here, so we have to be here. And then move forward. You know, I share some of this stuff, not to sound like a whiny bitch, because I hate complaining and I hate listening to other people complain about their injuries. It's like listening to old people talk about their doctor's visits. I share it so you know that I can relate. You name it. Knee surgeries, quad completely completely torn, complete tendon rupture. They actually never even reattached that. So where the tattoo is, there's actually a big hole there in my leg. So have plenty of reasons, like I said, to not like leg training. All right. So like I said, bands and dumbbells today. First movement. I'm gonna stick to theme that we've had this week, which is doing a lot of these movements, both band only, dumbbell only, and then a combination. So we'll do the same thing here. Grab our bands. So this is a deadlift of sorts, but let's pretend we're doing a squat with good form. So we're keeping our torso nice and upright and we're dropping that butt back. Looks just like this. What's the difference? I keep doing this, but I drop my hands here. It's the exact same thing. The only difference is, say if it's a bar, we're resting the weight on our shoulders. If it's dumbbells, now we're just having to hold on to it. What's the advantage of putting it on our back? Well, it can rest there as opposed to having to hold on to it. The risk of putting it on our back is it's really tempting to want to get a lot of movement in the back and we look in the mirror and we see that bar moving up and down, but so much of that movement is coming from the back as opposed to coming from the hip and the knee, which is what it's supposed to be. So that's why I say this is a deadlift of sorts, but really working the exact same muscles, quads, hamstrings, glutes. So I'm gonna show you a couple different options with the bands because I will tell you the one downside of doing with bands is when you get into heavier resistance, it is holding on to it and has a tendency to kind of pinch your hands, etc. So two options. 
right there. One is going to be using, say, fat grips, putting those on the band. The other option is using, say, an undersun anchoring system, looping the band in there and attaching a handle to it. That's a nice option as well. But if you don't have either of those things, I want to show you the most minimalist version of the movement. So you can do it no matter what. If you have the other equipment, then that's just a bonus. So when I'm doing these, I don't care for holding on to the band with my hands. It would look like this. Stepping on the band doubled up like this, and we're grabbing the band nice and low down here, dropping our butt, and it's coming up. So it's a great move, but I feel a ton of pressure in my fingers here. So the most minimalist version of this is looping our hand through there like as if they were wrist straps. And now that's taking some of the pressure off of our hands. So it's gonna look just like this. <sighs> Control those rep speeds. Controlled on the way down and a controlled push. Two more. One more. Nice. Tried to whistle there, but <laughs> a little dry. Good sign to hydrate. So, 90 seconds, rest ideally, between sets. We're gonna transition now to dumbbells. No different than bands. If you're doing this movement and you feel like your hands are fatiguing, there's nothing wrong with using straps. This is leg day, it's not forearm day. And I strongly disagree with a lot of these so-called experts that are preaching, if you ever use wrist straps, you're compromising grip strength. It's not true, you don't need to train your grip every single day. And we grab things every day when we weight train. Be like saying you have to train your legs every single day. You don't, it's ridiculous. If I train my legs every single day, I'm going to end up overtraining them. So it's the same thing. You do this over and over every day, you're gonna end up with overuse injuries, which usually manifests in the elbow. All these muscles get tight and you end up with tendonitis. And that's the one thing I will say about training as long as I have. I used to believe a lot of things, but then when you do it long enough to have to deal with the consequences, then all of a sudden you change your perspective. So when I listen to someone who's maybe 30 years old and they haven't been doing this long enough to face those consequences, then you know, take it with a grain of salt. 
I usually say that same exact person, 15, 20 years from now, is going to be preaching something different. Because even at 40, I was still doing a lot of this stuff and still getting away with it. Just a hard learner, I guess. I've always been the person who learned from mistakes. You can tell me the right way, but I'm going to have to do it for myself. Do it the wrong way and have to deal with the consequences. All right, so if you don't use wrist straps, really simple here. Just come underneath and you're just going to pull it nice and tight. And then I'll take my hand and give it a little rotation just to snug it up. With dumbbells, you have to make sure you get your thumb over there first, right? Because otherwise there's no room for it to slide it past. So cinch it up. When you do your second hand, it requires a little bit of technique. Push it through with your thumb, grab it with your other finger. Same thing, it just, you don't have your other hand to help. All right, so exact same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and stand up for our start. So it's gonna be identical. Chest out, chin up, weight on the heels, drop that butt back. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ah. Ten. I want to get two more. One more. Nice. So comparing and contrasting, here's how they feel different. And it makes sense why. These are much harder in the bottom half of the range of motion. So from here, to here. As I start to lock out, it gets a little easier. These are the exact opposite. When I'm down low, the band is less stretched, so I have less tension. The higher I get in that position, the more the band stretches, the more resistance, so I feel a much stronger contraction at the very top. And that's where the combination of them comes into play. You get the best of both worlds. I should get the heart pumping. So we're gonna take the straps off here. I'll show you how I prefer to do these. One, we're gonna go down in resistance now. We don't need as much resistance with the dumbbell. We don't need as much resistance with the band because it's going to be a combination. All right. So I'm going to face you here. I want to do these. I used to do them differently. 
you used to take the band and I would just loop it around the handle on both sides. Then I would just grab the handle and I didn't worry about grabbing the band. Here's why I don't like doing that. Now I don't have the assistance of the straps because I'd rather not add the complication of bands plus lifting straps. So now I'm having to hold the resistance not only of the dumbbell, but also of the band. So if we take our technique from our first set and we loop our hands through there like this. So now instead of grabbing the band, we're just gonna grab the dumbbell. And you see it locks it in there. So now we're only really having to hold on to the dumbbell, not the dumbbell plus the band. Oh boy, same thing, I'm gonna get in a starting position here at the top. All right, it's gonna be nasty. Nice and controlled, don't rush these. Why don't you come to the side? Six. It was getting tough. Just try to squeeze four more. Ah, seven. Nine. One more. So, was rushing those rep speeds. So let's say the movement hurts a little, maybe hip, knee, back. You can easily lighten the resistance and slow your rep speeds down even more to increase the intensity, but lower the intensity on your joints. Ooh, that was set three. Stretch out the hamstring a little. Fun leg day. You're not already sweating and breathing hard after your first exercise, you are not pushing yourself enough or your rest periods are too long. Oh boy. They also tell you whether you're in shape or not. And I am not. Alrighty. So we have single leg squats, it says lunges, that's with bands, we're not really lunging. So I want to make this a little more quad focused, so we're going to do two things. 
One, we're going to elevate our heels a little. Let me show you what that looks like, even without resistance. So just watch posture and the upper body doesn't really change. I'm trying to keep that more upright. But watch the movement at the hip versus the knee. Say I'm doing a regular squat here. If I drop that butt back, a lot of movement at the hip, a lot of movement at the knee. It's about close to 90, close to 90. Do the exact same thing, elevating in the heels. Now we're gonna get a little bit more movement at the knee. And that is going to make it a little more quad dominant. So same posture here, I squat down. Look at that movement in the knee. You see the knees coming out over the toes. This is way more quad dominant. So we're gonna do these with bands. And we're gonna do it more like a front squat, but with bands. So we're gonna anchor this under our feet. Now, if you don't have a wedge like this, it's cool. You could use a 45 pound plate, whatever you can find. We don't have to elevate our heels much, only about this much. You look at old videos of a bodybuilder like Tom Platts, he didn't use a wedge, but look at the shoes that he trained with, had a big fat heel on them, and it was the same principle. So let's get into position and bring this right over our shoulder, right there, and then we're just gonna lightly hold it in place with our hands, but really the weight is distributed across our shoulders. Oh, starting position, back up a little. Here we go. We're gonna control that rep speed to make it a little harder. Controlled, eccentric, console, controlled concentric push. Six, I'm gonna slow down even more. Ah, it's eight. Let's get four more. All right, stretch out that quad. Thing weighs like a thousand pounds. So generally speaking, the more movement at the knee, the more the focus is on the quad. The more movement at the hip, the more the focus shifts to glutes and hamstrings. Now that applies to squats, it applies to lunges, applies to leg press. I said this before, but if you're doing a leg press and your feet are higher up on the platform and you're pressing more through your heel, you're gonna notice you get less movement at the knee, more movement at the hip. So that's gonna be a little more glutes, hamstrings. If you bring your feet lower on that platform, you'll notice you get way more movement at the knee and it becomes more quad focused.
I say this a lot, but got to resist the temptation to sit down. Trust me, I want to sit down right now. There's no time for sitting down. Our 90 seconds goes by quick. It's just enough time. Lightly stretch, catch your breath, grab a drink of water, get back to it. So, I'm gonna do same exact move with dumbbells. Now, you need to adjust your resistance levels when you're doing this because you're not going to be as strong. Think about it. If we do a regular squat and we're engaging quads, hamstrings, glutes, somewhat equally, you're gonna be much stronger. You have everything assisting. When we start to target a muscle more and put more of the focus on the quads, you're not gonna be as strong. So you need to drop down in resistance. And that's why a lot of people, frankly, don't like doing some of these different movements because they don't feel as strong. And that's why I say it's important to take the ego out of it because it's not about impressing anybody with how much weight you move. And trust me, I see plenty of the people in gyms moving a lot of weight and I am not impressed because I see really shitty technique and I don't see a lot of results. Here we go. Make sure you don't bounce at the bottom. Nice smooth transition. Saying that you know, moving a lot of weight doesn't impress me, but neither does seeing someone use uber perfect des or discipline technique without any kind of intensity. Where I'm usually impressed is when I see someone in there getting it, really just busting their ass. And that's, out of everything, really what's gonna get you results. It's like this pendulum swung from one extreme to another. All intensity, no technique, to all technique, no intensity. <sighs> you can tell the people in the gym, they're training hard, because they're always doing like the walkabout. It's like the pacing. That's when you know you had a good set, when you start pacing, walking in circles. All right. Now I could combine the bands and the weights, but I don't like when movements get overly complex, too many variables. So 
having to manage body posture while using the wedge, trying to anchor the band, grab the dumbbells, it's a little bit too much, a little bit too much brain damage. So I like the combination, but it doesn't mean I always do it. If I had to pick between the two, I think I like the bands more and I'll tell you why. Simply for the fact that when I'm down here at the bottom, this is where you're gonna feel weaker. So we have a natural strength curve where the weak is down here. As we press up, we get stronger and stronger and stronger. The bands match that. Which is why when you see people squatting heavy, that's why a lot of times they don't like going super deep in the squat if they're trying to push themselves, they'll stick in this range where they're really strong, right here. And that's why you won't ever see them drop their ass down is because here to here, they might not be able to move that same weight. Once upon a time, I used to do a combination. Before I got into using chains or using bands, what I would do is break it up. I would do sets that were a little bit lighter and I would train in the bottom half of the range of motion here to here. And then I would do heavier sets where I was stronger in the top half of the range of motion. And then a lot of times I would finish off with a moderate weight where I would do full range of motion. But with bands or chains, you can kind of accomplish that at the same time. Sounds like we lost our music. Whew. All right, nice and controlled rep speeds. One, two, smooth transition. One, two. This is four, so a lot of times I'll go one, two, one, five. One, two, one, six. One, two, one, seven. That way I can keep track of my tempo, otherwise I have a tendency to rush it. One, eight. Nine. It's ten. Two more. It's one, two, one, eleven. One, two, one, twelve. Now, total transparency because my back is really screaming. That is the weak link in the chain, so to speak. So I'm having to temper the amount of resistance I'm using. So if you don't see me like really struggling on sets 9, 10, 11, and 12, that's why. I'm trying to be smart about this because I'd rather come back and be able to train legs again next week rather Moderate session and a moderate session, a moderate session, then one really hard session, and then be out of the game for two weeks because I screwed myself up. I would say that consistency really kind of trumps most things. That's why you always hear this saying, even the worst workout is better than no workout. But this is far from a bad workout. All right, so that was three sets of those. I'm gonna drop down on the ground, stretch out my low back real quick, and then we're gonna move 
to a single leg press. Actually, no, we're not. Why don't we do... Uh, I'm going surprise you here. Let me stretch out. Rack these dumbbells first. So we're going to do this more hamstring glute focus because this last exercise is more quad focus. I'm actually going to leave this out because we're going to do the opposite, right? So we elevated our heels. We're actually going to elevate our toes a little bit, accentuate this movement. Let me turn it sideways so you can see. We're going to do these with bands. So with bands, it doesn't really matter what you call it. You call it a stiff-legged deadlift. You can call it a Romanian. Difference between those two with weights is one, you're picking up from the floor. The other one, you're starting from a standing position and you're stopping short of the floor. So they're bands. We're not setting them on the floor. So it doesn't really matter what you fucking call it. All right, so with these, here's the thing that we want to focus on. I shared this the other day on the hyperextension machine. There's two types of extension that can happen here as we do these. We can just get extension at the hip, so we're going to come forward, keeping that back straight, and then the drive right here, pushing those hips forward, that's all hip. So that's hip extension, that's gonna be glutes, hamstrings. If I come down here and I round my back out and I come up, that's also going to be extension in my spine. So yes, glutes, hamstrings, but also those muscles in your low back. And that's a lot of times where you see people, you know, their low back starts to light up on them and they feel very uncomfortable in this movement. So if we wanna hit more hamstrings, glutes, we wanna be disciplined with our posture not only keeping our back straight, but almost a slight arch in it in the way that I think about that always is chest out and chin up as I do these. Slight bend in the knee. They're not locked out like this. Slight bend. And we wanna go down until you feel that nice stretch in the hamstrings. And then instead of thinking about pulling up, I want you to think about pushing the pelvis forward. Your hands are automatically gonna come up, right? We're not pulling them up. Hands are just coming up as a byproduct of our hips coming forward. And by elevating our toes, we're just accentuating that stretch there a little bit. Good way to think about it. if you were doing a hamstring stretch on the floor, we'll do this at the end if I remember. Do a hamstring stretch sitting on the ground with your toes pointed forward. Now do that same stretch where you bring your toes closer to you. Feel the difference. All right, so grab the band nice and low so we have tension. Get that arch in the back. Push those hips forward. And then push the hips back. So think about pushing that butt back. Tension in the hamstring. Forward. I'm gonna go ahead and narrow my stance a little. Get a little more tension on the band by grabbing lower.
eight. Nine. Ten. Ah. You know, I said I was going to stretch my low back out, and I didn't. We're going to do the second set a little bit different. Just give you an option just in case this bothers your grip. I'm going to come down here. Hands out in front of me. I'm just going to drop backwards, even creep my hands forward. There we go. So there's a lot of different things that can cause that irritation in the low back. For me, it is herniations there in my lumbar, but there's a lot of shit going on from some of those old injuries. Had a, a, most of my abductor removed from this side. It had all calcified, turned to bone. So they had to go in there and cut all that out. So there's a bunch of scar tissue there. Ended up creating scoliosis in my spine. And so when I squat, my hips are kind of twisted. Like there's all kinds of bullshit going on. So all the more reason why you just have to kind of go at your own pace, figure out what your limits are, what you're comfortable with. And then my best suggestion is gradually push those limits a little because the reality is if you have injuries, it's so easy to be fearful of hurting yourself more you can have doctors tell you, do this, don't do that, but they don't live in your, in your skin. Only you do. So no one can tell you the best way to go about it. They can give you some suggestions, things for you to try, but ultimately you're going to have to try them and see if they work for you. All right. So I'm going to drop down in resistance and show you the other option. And it's similar to what we did earlier with our squats. So instead of stepping on one side and then having to grab lower to create tension, we're going to double the band and loop our hands in there just like that. This is our starting position right here. I'm going to creep up on this a little bit, elevate my toes more. Here we go. Push the pelvis forward. Think about flexing your butt cheeks. Like if your wife was gonna walk by you and goose you in the ass, you would clench up. So kind of similar. Tuck that ass. <sighs> ah. <sighs> That's nine. Let's get three more good ones. Now, if you're doing these with a barbell or dumbbells, you want to keep that weight close to your legs. You don't want to be out in front of you like this. That's just putting a lot of torque back here on your low back. So when I learned the best tip I ever got with a bar, I'd leave my thumbs out and I'd let my thumbs drag across my leg. 
So if you're using dumbbells, it's even easier because now we can hold them closer to our sides here. Same thing with the bands. Grab a drink of water. Stretch out real quick. You can even grab something, drop, drop that butt back. We'll definitely be doing a good stretch and cool down. If I don't do it, that next day my back is wrecked. I want to be able to put my shoes on. So, it's like building muscle. You got to apply that same level of discipline and consistency into your conditioning, which is strengthening some of the smaller muscles, stabilizer muscles doing your stretching, soft tissue work. You know, through the years, my career in the fitness industry, my first job outside of being a trainer when I was really young, worked for a Hall of Fame bodybuilder with his company, so learned a lot from him. I worked for Joe Weider Publications, a muscle and fitness and flex magazine, worked on the Mr. Olympia production, so been around professional bodybuilders my whole life, or whole adult life. And one thing that a lot of them don't talk about, but most of them do, is they are religious about getting soft tissue work. So they'll go in, they'll have someone who does deep tissue, et cetera. You have to really work hard if we're constantly going in there and putting all this stress on those muscles. And that's what we're doing in order to create growth, right? That's what stimulus is. You're going in and you're breaking them down, creating stress. So you have to spend an equal amount of time on that recovery piece, which is more than just sleep and eating. I don't know where I'm going with this. I've got one more, it's wishful thinking. You know, like right now, my body is not liking me. And it'd be really easy to want to quit. And I don't really have any good advice for you other than suck it up. <laughs> like when I was young, my training partners, our mantra was, don't be a pussy. No one, no, nobody wants to say that anymore. They don't want to offend anyone, but don't be a pussy. Trust me, I say it to myself all the time. Don't be a pussy, James. I think that's how it sounds. Ah, uh, I can't finish, my, my back hurts. Sound like a pussy. Here we go. Push that butt back, stretching the hamstring, push the pelvis forward. There's four, let's get our same rep count. So one, two, one, and this is five. One, two, one, six. One, two, one, seven. There's eight, let's get four more. Nine. Uh, 10. Uh, 
Uh, hey, lad. Ah, that's what I want. What's the moral of the story? Don't be a pussy. You know, in all the years of being in this industry, I've known a lot of guys who've gotten great results, incredible physiques, and I've also known a lot of very, very bright people on the academic side. All the PhDs, very smart, but just because you know something or know how to do something based on a study or based on a book, doesn't mean all that stuff always pans out in reality. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room to come in and build muscle. You don't. You don't need case studies. It's nice to have the supporting information. It's good food for thought. Try it, you know, try applying some of this stuff. But at the end of the day, people have been building muscle for a long time. And what it really requires is not intelligence, although it helps to be able to train intelligently, but what it really takes is some grit. It takes some good old fashioned blue collar work ethic of going in there and not being afraid to bust your ass to work hard. And at the end of the day, we call it working out and the root word is work. So you have to do the work. And you can't outsmart the hard work. You can't find some sort of secret hack around the hard work. There is no shortcut around the hard work. All right, that was three. So that was three exercises. We are trying to step things up a little bit here. I'm going to show you another version of a single leg squat with a band, but different than the way we've done it up until this point. And this one is going to be a little more glute hamstring focused. So up until this point, we've been coming in here, laying the band flat on the ground under the arch of our foot, grabbing low and coming up like this. What we're gonna do here, try it with a little heavier band. Squat down to position. Put it right over our shoulder like this. Now we can't go too low in this because we're gonna lose tension in the band. Like if I come here, see that thing's pretty loose. So this is where I'll do a little bit of a partial, but the movement here is not straight up and down. It's definitely not out over the toes, which would be more quad focused. This one, we're gonna get more movement at the hip, a little less at the knee by pressing backwards. And so it's gonna look like this. Dropping down and pressing back this way. So forward, back. We can just hold that band. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, one more, twelve. 
This movement, depending on how you can do it, will feel totally different. This one, I feel more in the hamstrings. When I do it the other way with the band under my foot, a lot of times I'll feel it more in this insertion, the glute hamstring insertion, right up under your ass there. This one is more right in the belly of the hamstring. Like I said, just lightly hold it just so it doesn't slide off your shoulder. Try pushing through the heel as you do these. Don't push through the toe. I need to slow them down. It's our rep count. One, two, one, two. See how easy it is to start speeding up especially the more it starts to burn. The more uncomfortable it is, the more your natural tendency to try to rush through it. Whew. I think out of all questions I have ever gotten about bands, probably the most common one is curiosity about building legs using only bands. And I totally get it because the perception is we have all these big muscles, so we mustn't need a lot of weight to build them. Heavy, heavy squats, heavy, heavy deadlifts, heavy, heavy leg press. And the reality is you don't have to. Especially with bands, yes, you come in here and you grab a small band like this, you're not going to get much of a leg workout doing, say, squats with something as small. But I'll tell you what, you come in here and do something like this, which a lot of guys don't like to do. You see the women doing this? Let me tell you, this right here will set your glutes on fire. So it doesn't take a whole lot of resistance with some of these movements. So it really is about how you use them. It's actually a good one. I, I hate that exercise though. My wife loves that one. She puts me to shame on it which should tell us something. If women can come in and do some of these more glute specific movements and move as much weight as men or more, we should be embarrassed by that because the glutes are the biggest muscle in the body. So as men, we should be going in there and training it with the same kind of intensity that the women do. Big little bubble butt. You don't want to be the dude with a flat ass either, though. That's a bad look. I think women, if I had to guess, like a man with a butt just the same way that men like women with a good butt. All right, we got to do... Set two here. I'm gonna go up in resistance slightly. We haven't really done much of this, but easy little thing that you can do, you can add bands on top of bands, just like you would stack plates on a bar. No different. 
So you're not just limited to five different resistance levels with a set of bands. You have a lot of different combinations there. Okay, here we go. Press through that heel. Let's get our rep count. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, three. Let's make sure we go backwards. One, two, one, four. One, two, one, five. One, two, one, six. One, two, one, seven. One, two, one, eight. One, two, one, nine. One, two, one, ten. Two more. Ah. Uh, one, two, one, eleven. Wow. So for me, there is a big difference going that little bit extra in the range of motion. So what I mean by that is if I come in here and just squeeze up, that's okay. But if I really want to hit that hamstring a little bit more, going from here to there, almost lifting the toe and pressing through the heel. Shirt is soaked. Try throwing it against the wall, but we already tried that. Didn't stick, it was just disgusting. How about another test? If you throw it on the ground and it splatters, that's a good workout. We'll try that one. Here we go. <clears throat> used to be way worse when I trained in the gym Florida whoo blazing that'll toughen you up one one two one Two, one, two, one, three. One, two, one, four. One, two, one, five. One, two, one, six. Halfway. Seven. Yeah. Eight. Ah, ah. Here we go. Four more. Two. That's one. One. Two. That's two. Two more. Ah, make it stop. One more. Oh, Stretch out those hamstrings a little bit. set of these. We're going to finish up with some crunches. That'll be our finisher.
from my drink from earlier. Oh. Don't sit down. I'm talking to myself, by the way. I keep staring at that bench. It's talking to me. All right. You know, you look at people that um, take a long time with the rest periods. <sighs> Come to realize a lot of it's a form of procrastination. <laughs> Like, when do we procrastinate? We don't procrastinate when we're doing fun stuff that's awesome. <laughs> we dive right into that. We procrastinate when it's shit we don't want to do. So I see people procrastinate in between their sets. Because you know that next set, <laughs> if you go and push yourself and keep your rest period short, it's going to suck. So don't procrastinate. One, two, three, there's four, five, tempo check, here we go, one, two, one, six, one, two, one, Seven, eight, nine. Oh, should want to quit here. Push through. Ten, eleven. Last one. Control it. Twelve. Almost there. Oh. Here, one little tip for band care. You can see, pretty gross, they're all sweaty, right? If you put them away this way, I feel that all that salt that's in our sweat, probably not the best thing for extending the life of our bands. So I try to always remind myself to wipe them down. I don't use chemicals, that's even worse. So I don't use any kind of soaps or cleaners, just a really damp cloth, wipe them down, just run it through it real quick, and then hang them up, let them dry. They're made out of a natural latex. So it means they're an organic material. Organic materials can mold. So if you put your bands away, say in a bag, put them away wet, it's no bueno. And because they're an organic material, they're also more susceptible to things like UV. So if you leave them outside in the sun, they're going to dry up and crack. So they'll last a long time if you take care of them. Here we go. Uh, one. Two. Three. Four. Six, seven, eight, 
eight, check, one, two, one, nine, one, two, one, ten, two more. Ah. Oh, it's such a great feeling to be done. It's satisfying. So here's what I was saying. Like these are sanitizing wipes. I do not use these on my bands. Those are for the benches. I'll just take cloth. Just run it through there. Just real quick. It's even better, like I said, if that's damp and then hang them up. Oh man. So we're gonna grab the mat again if you want. If you don't care about laying on the floor, then we'll just lay on the floor. And we're gonna do some abs. All right, I'm right here. Now I was saying this the other week, I like to anchor my feet a little. I did a video saying that, you know, crunches aren't my favorite ab exercise or traditional crunches. And what I mean by that, when I see people doing crunches, a lot of times it ends up like this little small range of motion. So that'd be like doing biceps curls like this. We want to try to get more full range of motion if we, if we can. And our abdominals, as these muscles sh contract, they're shortening the distance from here to here, this way. So they're curling or flexing our spine. So we want to get a little more flexion in the spine. By anchoring our feet, we can come up a little higher. So I showed this in a video and was like, oh, congratulations, you reinvented the sit up. No. A sit-up would be anchoring my feet and coming all the way up like this. And I can do this with getting almost no flexion in my spine. Watch the curve in my back. Okay? Here. Here. What I'm using is hip flexors more because I'm not getting that strong flexion in the spine. So this is halfway in between a traditional crunch and a traditional sit-up. So... Yes, we were coming up higher, but we were getting good flexion in the spine and then coming down. So here versus this. Not to mention, I see people using a lot of momentum, right? That swing up like this. And we were all taught really bad form in the 90s, at least when I grew up, because we had presidential fitness awards. How many sit-ups can you do in a minute? Well, what does that do? It promotes really shitty form. So it's not about quantity. It's not a race. It's about quality. <clears throat> Stop short. Don't let your shoulders rest on the ground. Don't do this. Stop short. Constant tension. Squeeze back up. If you get fatigued, you drop your feet out. Make it a little easier. You get a little less range of motion, but it'll get you through your set. There's nine. Ten. Eleven, twelve. Now, since I'm on the ground, I want to speed up my cool down. So, using this as an opportunity to come in here, stretch out the hamstrings. That way, we're knocking out both at the same time. Because the reality is, 
when you're done with the workout and you're tired, the last thing you wanna do is sit there and you know do a bunch of cool down movements or stretches. You wanna get the fuck out of there. So as much as I can, I try to integrate that into my workouts. Oh, dude just reinvented the sit up. That's like that shirt I had made. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one, especially in the fitness industry. Everyone thinks that they're a fitness expert. How you even use that term, to be honest with you, I, I don't even know what that means. I think you can have a level of expertise. Some of that can come from school, from textbooks, from case studies, but then you need the practical experience and that's just time in the gym. It's no different than being a doctor. Think about it. Where do they let a doctor go to medical school and as soon as he gets his diploma, goes off and starts operating on patients by himself? Never happens, ever. Why? He needs practical experience. It's the exact same thing. So you can study this shit till you're fucking blue in the face, but you got to invest a certain amount of time just going in and doing it. And some of it is going to be trial and error. nine, three more. One more. That's disgusting. So now in a gym, if you leave something like that for someone else to clean up, that's just a lack of respect. I'm super old school when it comes to just basic respect, showing other people respect, and that's why I clean up my mess. And that is probably my single biggest issue in gyms today is just a lack of respect. And people say, oh, it's all the young people. No, it's not. No, actually, you know, funny enough, a lot of the teenagers that I see in the gym are better than a lot of the adults. So if you make a mess, you sweat on something, I can take the time, clean it up. Wipe it up. That is my biggest pet peeve. And I can't get past it either. See someone do that? I don't know, to me it says a lot about them. All right, we got one more set. Let me grab some water though. So if you've made it this far in this workout, we'll consider ourselves friends here. So I'll share some of my uh, insecurities when it comes to legs. Cause I used to love, love training legs. And it was definitely my strength with my physique. My legs were much bigger than my upper body. And then after that car accident, it just, you know, became more and more challenging, but it wasn't just that. It was the fact that my legs were all mangled, that I had all these weird scars and disfigurations. And so I used to hide them all the time. Always wore sweats or always wore super long baggy shorts that went past my knees. 
And it took me a while to get past that. And I, and I think that was actually probably one of the impediments for me wanting to go in and train legs hard is because I just wasn't as strong as I used to be. And there was that ego attached to it. You know, I used to be one of the strongest guys in the gym, if not the strongest guy in the gym with a lot of these movements. And then all of a sudden I'm not anymore. So that was a tough hurdle to get past. And so that really forced me to wrestle with my own ego. And uh, so, you know, when it comes to legs, like I got all sorts of weird stuff going on. You can see, you know, there's scars on the knees. Those don't really bother me much. I have them, you know, on both knees there. This one is a weird one that people always wonder. You see this like soft spot. That's a big tear right in the muscle itself. So I can stick my finger all the way in there. So when get a good workout, drives all that blood in there, pushes that thing out, that looks weird. Here, my quad is torn, so you see there's a big void. There's your vastus medialis here. Mine's gone. So just weird things like that made it, uh, for a while, took the fun out of leg training for me. And so I've just had to learn over time to not be bothered by it. <clears throat> At the end of the day, you know what? No one gives a fuck. It was all in my head anyway. And anyone's, you know, going to sit there and judge me for it. Well, that's bad on them. It's pretty, uh, pretty freeing or liberating when you stop caring what other people think about you. But that took me time, in all honesty. That's five. You know, that's a uh, thing about working out those. We all have different motivations at different points in our life. And I'd be lying if I didn't say that a big part of my motivation early on in my training was for the attention. Uh, hey, look at that guy. He's super ripped. He's in super shape. Or, you know, trying to get the attention of girls. You know, so, so much of my motivation for training, if you really are honest about it, was for other people. And it took me a long time to get to the point where I was training for myself. So that was a journey though. You know, it's an ongoing journey, but that's where you kind of have to wrestle with this idea of your ego. That was probably one of the first steps I made towards getting a handle on my ego was after that car accident. You know, going from being the big, strong guy in the gym to all of a sudden being the broken dude, the guy who hobbled in on a walker and, you know, weighed 139 pounds. So much of my sense of identity, I didn't realize was tied up in the way that I looked. So then when all of a sudden that was stripped away from me, that was a reality check, big time. And so that, you know, in a way was a weird blessing because that forced me to deal with that early on. Like I was saying earlier in the conversation that the injuries forced me to change my training style early on. And so I learned that a long time ago. Well, it was the same thing with my ego. It forced me early in my life to confront that. And so it's a really a blessing if you look at it. Some people would say, oh, that was tragic. 
but I can tell you that so many great things came from it. So much personal development came from that, that I would never change it for anything. And that's the way I feel about most tough situations in my life. I wouldn't want to repeat it if I didn't have to. Wouldn't want to, you know, go through it again, but I certainly wouldn't want to go back and change it because those things have helped me become the person that I am today. And I think when you're happy with who you are, you're comfortable in your own skin, then you're never going to have regrets because you're going to recognize that all those things led to where you're at today. The only time I see people have regrets is when they're not happy with who they are today or where they're at today. And then they have a tendency to look back at those past situations. But that's why I've always looked at every bad situation and looked for the opportunity for personal growth in it. And that way, it just shifted my perspective. Same exact event. Nothing was different about it. The only thing different was my attitude about it, my mentality or mindset. And I think that's one of, one of those things that becomes really a big game changer in your life is when you stop seeing adversity or challenges as something bad that's happening to you and you start to see it as a gift, as an opportunity to test yourself, just like it is coming in here and, you know, pushing resistance. It's the exact same concept. Resistance in here makes you stronger and resistance in the world makes you stronger. Whew. All right. So that was a wrap for legs and abs. We're going to come in tomorrow, Friday, fun day compared to legs. We're going to come in and do shoulders. Same thing. Let me squeeze in here. We're going to do two uh, combination of resistance bands and dumbbells. And then our last workout for the week will be Saturday, which is a full body workout. Now one you're going to be doing on your own. And that'll be a wrap for this week. So come join me tomorrow for shoulder day. And I'll see you then.